We have with us today the Mitsubishi Expander Cross. Let's check it out. The Expander Cross introduced here in the Philippines in 2020 is Mitsubishi's answer to the Honda BRV. Receiving a major refresh in early 2023, it aims to keep its popularity strong and we have it here with us. This is the 2023 Mitsubishi Expander Cross and it's priced at 1,328,000 Philippine pesos. Looking at its exterior, the Expander Cross remains eye-catching like the standard Expander but taking a more rugged appearance with its chunkier front bumper and redesigned dynamic shield grille. It also gets updated lighting with the LED DRLs and turn signals on top and the T-shaped LED headlights below. It also gets LED fog lights. The side also looks very rugged with the black plastic cladding and roof rails on top. This also wears a different set of 17-inch two-tone alloy wheels wrapped in Bridgestone tires, while ground clearance is the same at 225mm. The rear continues with a rugged look with a beefier bumper, and like the rest of the exterior, is much more modern with the LED taillights. Opening the manual tailgate reveals space enough for three small pieces of luggage with the third row seats up, which is actually really good. Folding them down expands this to more than you'll need for everyday use. Storage is also available under the floor. And now we're inside the Expander Cross, and I've shown this to you before. It's a lot better compared to the pre facelift model. This one is sleeker, it looks more premium, and it feels better overall. So the overall design here makes more use of straight lines compared to before. It just looks easier on the eyes compared to the curvy curvy design of the pre-facelift version. And the color scheme as well is different. So we now have a dark blue scheme here. Dark blue and black interior. Which I also really like compared to the brown one before. I'm not usually a fan of dark blue interiors but this one here looks really nice. It's just very subtle in terms of the how the color looks. Materials have also been very much upgraded as well because we now have soft touch leather on the dashboard that makes it way more premium compared to before because the old one only had hard touch plastics. This one has soft touch leather everywhere and the top portion here is hard touch plastic but it does feel pretty solid and the quality of the plastic they use is actually really good just like in other Mitsubishi products. And then one big difference that we have here compared to the previous Expander Cross is the new steering wheel. This is actually the same steering wheel you'd find in the Montero Sport and the Strada, which I don't think it's a bad decision to have it. Although, I must say that the Expander steering wheel and the regular Expander actually looks better than this one. But this is what we have over here and it features our controls for the instrument cluster on the left and then our audio controls on the lower left and on the right side we have our cruise controls and our bluetooth phone controls it's also tilt and telescopic adjustable so at least we do have that not much adjustment but it's better than nothing and then another difference here is the new 8 inch instrument cluster digital instrument cluster over there it's the same one as well that we find in the montero sport gt and black series variant so it's exactly the same actually there's no difference at all we do have a few different displays over there for our trip computer and it's also slightly customizable depending on what you want to see. So we have different menus over there. Then you can also change how the gauges actually look. So I personally prefer the RPM focused one. Then there's two other display options as well. And this may not be the newest instrument cluster, digital instrument cluster that you can find these days but I personally still really like how it looks. Then here in the center, we have also our new 7-inch touchscreen infotainment system. So this one is purely a Mitsubishi system. Now the old one had a an aftermarket screen which was taken from a third-party supplier. This one is really Mitsubishi and it shows because it's so much better. It's so much easier to use. The graphics are pretty good. It's very responsive. So every touch that you do, it responds instantly regardless of which setting you're doing, which menu you're in. It's very user-friendly. Everything that you want to find is where you'd expect them to be. And it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as well. The old one didn't have those as well. So we have that. And then we also have our buttons here on the left side with, with a tiny volume knob. So most cars do away with this already. This one still has them over there. Very much appreciated. Also, it's not as big as the 9-inch screen that you'd get in other markets. But this will do, although it does look pretty small right now but again I this is better than what we had 
before. Then moving down, we have our manual digital climate control. So we control them using these toggles, so very easy to use as well. We have a display there as well, which is very much appreciated. Again, I really like having a separate display for our air conditioning. Then the bottom, we have our buttons for different functions of the climate controls. Then moving further down, we have lots of space over here. So first, there's a small storage shelf on the upper portion. Then a space to put your cards, like, like your cards for our tollways. Then we have a USB port, a regular USB port by the way. And then our 12 volt power outlet and lots of storage on the lower portion where you can put pretty much anything like your phone, wallet, and other stuff. Then here in the center console, you'll find our electronic parking brake with auto hold function. This is new for the facelifted expander and expander cross. And it's also a Nissan part. So if this looks familiar, it's actually the same part used by Nissan vehicles. Then our shifter here is still the same as before. Feels pretty good. And just like before, we have our overdrive button over there because this is a four-speed automatic. We'll talk about that more on the road. Then here, two cup holders and our large center armrest over here, which is actually pretty nice, pretty soft. And underneath that, we have loads of storage. Although I must say that this armrest here this feel a bit flimsy but again better than before we didn't have this before and then for the seats they're still exactly the same as before except for the color scheme because just like the rest of the interior this now gets a dark blue and black color scheme the old one had brown as well they're still not the most comfortable they're a bit flat they're not the most supportive but they will do and the leather material that they used over here is actually pretty nice and also here in the passenger side we do have a storage drawer underneath and now we're here in the second row of the expander cross and this really shows the reason why you would buy an MPV like this because look at this we have loads of space over here I'm 5 feet and 7 inches tall and yeah space is not a problem here at all loads of leg room loads of knee room foot room is unlimited as well and then the seats themselves can fit three passengers three people of my size comfortably across the the seats so that's very nice to have over here and then for stuff that we have here we have our four air convents on top they blow air from the air convents in front and then here our seat back pockets we have multiple pockets over here we have two usb ports one usb a and one usb c and then here our center armrest which once folded down it does make it appear like you have a two-seater section here for the second row so this is actually a really big armrest with two cup holders really nice to have and now we're here on the last row of the expander cross and again this also shows just like in the second row why you'd get an mpv instead so i still have pretty good space over here i do have the second row slid a bit forward so to give me more space even with the seat positioned really back way back still provides enough foot room leg room on the other hand with the seat slid forward it's pretty decent i do have a little bit a little extra space over here to move around which is not bad at all but if the seat is placed completely back there it'll be a bit tight for people like me but children here won't have any problem at all because we do have decent amount of space for them also these seats are on the flatter side but that's expected for a third row seat and for stuff that we have here we do have lots of storage space cup holders on both sides and even a 12 volt power outlet so the third row passengers are not forgotten also the air convents the cold air does reach here pretty well and now we're driving the Mitsubishi Expander Cross and this is not our first time to experience this we've driven the regular Expander a few times we've driven the Expander Cross as well with before they launched it and also the pre-facelift version of both Expander and Expander Cross so we are quite familiar with this vehicle really nothing feels different compared to those and this Expander Cross because they still have the same engine that's one thing so this is powered by a 1.5 liter four cylinder naturally aspirated gasoline engine that produces 105 horsepower and 141 newton meters of torque paired to a four speed automatic transmission. And once you do get moving, you'll find that the Expander Cross is actually quite decent to drive inside the city. So that's actually very responsive thanks to the transmission. So that four speed automatic transmission is actually a good and a bad thing so the good is that it's very responsive it gives you lots of low end torque and actually it shifts quite smoothly the bad thing though is that it's quite old so 
we were hoping that this would have a CVT once they updated or at least here in the expander cross even if not on the regular expander but here in the expander cross we were hoping that it would come with a CVT which would definitely provide for a smoother drive although I'll take this the four speed automatic does still feel pretty good despite it being quite old but yeah I'd still prefer a CVT overall and also with that the power delivery here inside the city is actually quite good so if you do want to do some merging especially in areas where drivers are getting quite selfish the way that the engine responds is actually pretty helpful in doing that so you won't find any lack of power when driving inside the city it's a different story though if you're out on the highway because this will feel a bit underpowered eventually so it's definitely not the most powerful something like a honda brv will be better to drive on the highway and also actually overall the honda brv is a lot more engaging to drive compared to this but this one is more on the comfort side i also want to add that the sound coming from the engine is not exactly my type so it actually sounds kind of like a cheap car well it's not that expensive the car but it actually the engine makes it known that it's actually not an expensive car because it just sounds like a normal engine nothing special over there and then when it comes to the steering this is surely tuned for city driving because the steering is very very light it's actually devoid of feedback there's no feedback at all so that's something that you will find that this car doesn't do as well compared to a honda brv or hyundai stargazer but the light the lightness does really help in making driving inside the city a bit more relaxed compared to your usual driving i won't say that this car is boring to drive except for that steering because the way that the engine responds actually makes it a bit more fun to drive so, but so there is that but still i do wish that we were provided with a lot more feedback compared to what we have right now one more thing that can definitely be improved is nvh insulation so road noise can actually be heard quite loud so it's definitely there you will hear that every time you drive this car even at lower speeds and much more once you get out on the highway cabin vibrations can also be improved because there are quite a lot of vibrations in this cabin so despite the overall interior feeling quite solid when i showed it to you earlier there are actually some loose pieces i think because i can hear stuff rattling around there's some vibrations around so that can be improved as for ride quality it's pretty comfortable overall so the suspension does do a really good job of soaking up the road imperfections although there are times that it will feel a bit more firm compared to other models in the segment but overall i think that this is actually quite good in that regard so ride quality is pretty decent on the other hand visibility is actually really really good we have large windows a large windshield and pretty good sized side mirror so that all makes it pretty easy to drive especially in tighter streets and this car is not really big so that makes it even easier to drive around the city and definitely important to buyers in this segment is fuel economy because this actually does pretty good so inside the city we were able to achieve about 11 kilometers per liter in mixed traffic conditions and on the highway this can achieve as much as 20 kilometers per liter easily so there is no difficulty in reaching that and i just like to go back to the steering for a bit because this actually has a pretty good turning radius so we're gonna take a u-turn now and we'll see how tight this is so yeah it's a pretty good turning radius mitsubishi actually advertises this as having the best in the segment as well as their other vehicles like the strada and the montero sport and true enough this might actually have the best turning radius in the segment and before we end let's talk about this vehicle's lack of driver assistance tech because all its rivals actually come with driver assistance technology this one comes with none and that's kind of weird considering that mitsubishi was actually one of the first brands here in, here in the philippines at least to offer those kinds of features and this one has zero even just blind spot monitoring and autonomous emergency braking would be really nice to have but again this doesn't come with any of those the Mitsubishi Expander Cross may now seem a bit left behind compared to its rivals despite its updates. But its overall package is what it has best. It ticks all the right boxes and still offers what you need in utmost style and comfort.